In the automotive world, a sleeper is typically a slow car, like say a Toyota Cressida, that has been modified to be insanely fast. And there's another key element. The best sleepers, like this one from Mighty Car Mods, feature no external modification. So potential challengers would have no way of knowing that it's capable of chopping them to shreds, eating aforementioned shreds, then pooping them out. So. Inspired by this concept, we grabbed the nastiest, oldest, your great uncle is still using it for some reason case that we could find and vowed to make it smash games once more. Meet Hubert. Plain name, plain looks, plain performance. You know, that kind of plain. Synergy allows you to share your mouse and keyboard between multiple computers at once. Check it out now at the link in the video description. So first, we needed a case, and our good friends over at FreeGeek hooked us up with this. An Antec SX840, which back in the day was pretty dope, but after almost 15 years of filth collection, well, let's just say it was perfect. Opening it up though, the insides actually could have been a lot worse, all things considered. I wonder if this thing has even been opened since shortly after it passed QC back in 2003. I really hate that that's a long time ago now. <laughs> anyway, next order of business was a plan to pack it full of as much power and water cooling as we could. And because Alex can't resist an opportunity to fire up that copy of SolidWorks that they gave us for just such occasions, we created a model of the case and started virtually test fitting our components. Radiator in the bottom with vent holes? Hmm. Well, that could fit, but then we'd be stuck with a single graphics card. Unacceptable. So we settled then on a thick triple radiator in the front. This might seem slightly overkill, but these new Core i9 processors run hot as hell when overclocked, and we wanted to be able to push this baby as far as possible. Time to head down to the workshop. We pulled the drives, then spent about the next half an hour drilling out rivets with our trusty bottle of Rapid Tap. Ah, that's better. I mean, who needs ancient mechanical drives when you can have more room for cooling? Time for a test fit then before we make any irreversible modifications. Our pump reservoir position was the trickiest to figure out. At first, we wanted it to go in the bottom, but because of the PCIe slot positioning on our ASUS Prime X299 Deluxe, we couldn't make that work. There is some room up top, but that would make filling the system more difficult without putting in a fill port in the top and ruining our beautiful sleeper aesthetic. So finally, we came up with an idea. Maybe we could mount it to the fans. I mean, sure, that's not the greatest for airflow and it means that we'll have to be darn careful while drilling into them, but it might be just crazy enough to work. How to mount the radiator though? Holes in the front of the case would be the most obvious solution, but stealing the top radiator mount from a Mastercase Pro 5 would save us some time. So we flattened it out a bit and, oh shoot. It was still about a half an inch too thick. Not a problem though, it's Angle Grinder Man to the rescue! So with the cuts tidied up, it did still interfere slightly with the motherboard tray rivet, so out those came with the drill, and these holes here should serve us well for mounting the radiator. Of course though, our troubles weren't finished and we were still having some difficulty get, get, get. getting it in due to these pesky tabs. Thankfully, almost every problem in life can be solved with abrasives. Much better. To line up the screw holes, we poked the drill through the existing holes and gave it a little spin just to remove some of the paint so we knew where to drill. Next, we center punched where the screws would be and drilled on through. We then poor man's tapped the mount with some thumb screws and a lot of love and, and holy crap, this might actually work. Now, since the reservoir can't go anywhere else, we had to make some modifications to this poor fan. So we started small, then worked our way up to the thick objects. That's always the best way. Okay then, awesome. The reservoir's mounted, but clearly we'll need more airflow. Angle grinder to the rescue again. And 
as though like magic. That's more like it. So with hopefully all of our modifications to the case finished, it was time to finish it off with a nice coat of black paint. So at this point, we were ready to slap all the parts in, plan out our water cooling loop, and call it a day. But then, shortly after the cameras turned off for the night, getting jiggy with it came on the radio, and we realized the soft tubing we'd planned wasn't Big Willie style. So we flipped the script and flipped the rad, extended the res, and devised a plan for a loop sexy and hard enough for even the biggest willies. Mm. So instructions for hardline then. Measure, cut, fill, heat, bend, check, insert, secure, rinse, Do it. and repeat until done. Boom, custom hardline water cooling. Easy as that. After several hours of cable management, Man, old cases suck for that. We were ready for the final touch-ups. So we disassembled the loop, installed the storage, RAM, 80 millimeter OG case fans, which only got cleaned on the inside to maintain our sleeper's perfect external filth, and then reassembled the loop and filled it up. So then at this point, we put back together the outside of the case. Front panel goes on with double side taped CD and floppy drives. The side panels go back on and would you look at that? It's still awful and dirty on the outside, leaving anyone without a very keen eye to dismiss it as old crap. But open it up and holy frig is it beautiful. And with the horses to back it up. With an Intel Core i9-7900X 10 core, 64 gigs of RAM, RGB of course, dual GeForce GTX 1080s, a Samsung 940 Pro SSD, and a fully custom water cooling loop, we are looking at a machine that can run with pretty much anything out there today while staying both cool and quiet. That is, if you disable the rear fans. Cause they're really, really loud. Ow. So bask in the glory now of Hubert, and stay tuned for Dale, because the Sleeper PC series is far from over. So if you're a game developer, or a video editor, or you, uh, you use both Linux and Windows, one for serious work and one for gaming, whatever the reason is that you have two computers, Synergy solves once and for all the problem of needing to have two keyboards and two mice to go with them because it allows you to share your peripherals between multiple computers so you won't get confused anymore. They have a basic and a pro option for Synergy with a one-time payment for features that include copy and pasting between the computers, dragging and dropping files between computers, the ability to set up hotkeys, and more. And the best part is that Synergy works cross-platform between Windows, Mac, and even Linux. So check out the link in the video description and get 50% off Synergy today. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, I'm sorry that you hate fun. But if you liked it, hit that like button, get subscribed, and maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is a link to Free Geek. Huge shout out to them for hooking us up here, as well as our community forum and our merch store, both of which you should check out.